All right. Uh, welcome back to the Say It Out Loud podcast. If you're listening to this in your earbuds or you're watching this on YouTube, um, on my YouTube channel, just search for Vasavi Kumar. Thank you for being here. Uh, I am recording this episode as a result of a poll that I shared on my Instagram stories. If you don't follow me on Instagram, it's my name is Vasavi. And uh, I asked you all in the audience if uh, you wanted to hear how I energetically cut the cord with my ex fiance, the relationship that I've been talking about for the past year. Y'all, it's been four years. You know, I had a wake up moment, okay? Uh, bear with me, I'm gonna be a little all over the place, but just just follow, okay? I had, a, I had a wake up moment. This past Tuesday, when was it, last week? February 22nd, 2022. Would have been two, 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 two. Would have been my three years since him and I first got, in, he proposed to me on February 22nd, right? 2019. And um, I was like, oh my God, it's been three years. Wait, it's been a year. And I'm like, oh my God, have I wasted another four years of my life in a relationship that started off hot and heavy and then went to the point of getting engaged. And now we're just holding on by a thread. Am I here again? This is the second relationship I've done this with. See, with my husband, I don't really count, right? Like my husband, my ex-husband was the nicest, is the nicest man in the world, right? I have no hard feelings towards him. My relationship after that was four years. And then this relationship was four years. And I'm like, I have eight years of my life, 32 to basically now, and I'm going to be 40, right? And I couldn't believe it. I was like, I need to let this go. Like that, that it was like a doom, right? Like I need to let this go. Like boss, wake up. I was just was not willing to live in reality. And I want to start off by saying, you know, I'm going to get into how I energetically cut the cord with my ex. And I want to come right out and say it that I was, I'm going to say was, I was the most toxic person in my life. And specifically when it comes to my relationships with men there, you know, it's like the character, the man has always changed, but the flavor of the story, the plot is always the same, right? Damsel in distress finds hero, hero saves a day. Damsel in distress, uh, you know, starts expecting more and more. Hero is like, wait a minute, I already did my job. I saved you, don't ask me for any more. Damsel in distress becomes raging bitch, me starts losing her shit, right? And I have empathy for this part of me that st stayed in relationships for so long. And I wanna say this, just because you don't have a title, just because I, did, I wasn't Ben's fiance anymore or his ex-girlfriend or his girlfriend anymore, we were still, there was still a relationship of some sort, right? It wasn't, it wasn't even if it was like every few months, we'd have sex or something like that. But it's like, there's still a connection. There was an energetic connection that bound us together. There's an energetic connection, right? We met at a very traumatic point in my life. And I think for him too, he was like trying to get out of the situation that he was in and we both latched onto each other. So I realized that, and it's, I'm going to just come right out and say it, that other than being the most toxic person in my life, in, in, in my relationships, I realized that my only obstacle, the biggest obstacle, no, not only, the biggest obstacle for me, especially like since my marriage ended in the past, like I did not handle that end of that divorce. My biggest obstacle has been relationships. And what I mean by that is I'm not going to lie. I've always thought to myself, I could be farther along. I should have made more money. I should have done this and should have, would have, could have. Yeah. And if I'm being honest with myself, the thing that has taken up my most time and attention and energy are men. And I can't even believe I'm saying this because I thought I had it under control, right? Oh, we don't really see each other. We see each other maybe once in a while. Oh, it's not having an effect on me. I'm good. But no, it takes up so much. It takes up so much of my mental energy that it has had a direct impact on my self-worth, my self-esteem. I wrote down a few things that I used to energetically cut the cord, okay? You can take it or leave it. Number one thing I started doing is started to share with a fewer, I mean, you know, with, with a close circle of friends, not too many, maybe three or four friends, the truth. 
of how I was in those relationships. I didn't blame him. I shared what, you know, my perspective, but I also shared the truth of how I've been in those relationships. I didn't act like I was the victim. I said, yeah, I've done some really messed up things. I've said some really hurtful things. I've, you know, so I was very honest about my part in this relationship. So I could shatter the illusion that I'm a victim here, right? Uh, that I didn't do anything like, oh, that this is my love story, right? Vasavi's love story is like, poor thing. I poured so much into you and now you leave me. Like I wasn't about to repeat that narrative again. So I got really honest about my, my, my part in the relationship. The second thing is um, I smoked a lot of weed. I'm not going to lie. Like weed has really, really helped me in the past three months. Like it has helped me so much just slow down and turn inwards and I'm very intentional with the medicinal use of cannabis. It is not, I want to get high. I want to get stoned. It, it actually calms my entire body down, coupled with breathing, coupled with prayer, coupled with just resting more, resting more, talking to myself out loud, having nice conversations, like being kind and understanding with myself. Cannabis has helped. Take it or leave it. Okay. Um, could I have done it without it? Yeah, absolutely. But I had been completely sober for almost three years now. It's March 20, March 27th would be my three year um, sober anniversary, but from cocaine, alcohol, but with, um, with, with weed, it really helped. It, it's, it's helping. It's helping. And I, I, like I shared on the last few episodes, it's for a season. So was really honest with my friends, used cannabis very intentionally. I started to understand the information that I was consuming to help myself, I was able to see it from a different lens. Okay. Oftentimes when I would look up information on toxic relationships, I would, um, I would use it to like, kind of manipulate, right? Like, Oh, this is what I need to do. And what is the number one piece of advice, right? The number one piece of relationship advice is no contact, don't have contact. That was very hard for me because I feared that if I did not ever, like if I completely lost contact with him, that um, I would lose him forever. The truth that I had to wake up to was that I had already lost him and he was never mine to begin with, right? He was never mine. He's not my property, right? Um, so I, the information that I consumed I no longer was consuming it from a place of like, how can I use this information to control the situation? No, how can I use this information to have more power in my life to see how I've contributed to this? And also just to like really see that, oh my God, this is an unhealthy dynamic. The second thing that I started, the, sorry, for the fourth thing that I would do is just kind of surround myself. And this is not kind of, this is huge as I surround myself with very successful women. Um, one of the women that I, I've uh, spent time with recently is Emily Williams. Emily Williams is a host of I Heart My Life, the author of I Heart My Life. She brought us to our new home that she just built here. Um, and I was walking through our house with her. It was beautiful, beautiful, everything carefully curated, such thoughtfulness, such class. And I thought to myself, and I, and I, I, I am not saying this from a place of like comparison. It was a wake up call for me. And Emily's younger than I am, right? Emily's younger than I am. So for me, all these thoughts of like, oh, I'm older, da, 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 and I'm like, why haven't I? And, but like, I don't, when I look at comparison, I look at it more, I don't see it as I'm comparing myself. I'm seeing it as where do I need to be honest with myself, Vasavi, right? Where have you been not being more focused? What have you been prioritizing, you know, um, outside of you rather than prioritizing the things inside of you. Like, so I, when I hang out with really successful people and I am kind of like, oh shit, look at them. Like it inspires me and it makes me get honest with myself. And I even said that I sent a voice note to Emily and I was like, um, you really inspired me. I'm seeing where I'm not, I am not owning up and rising up to my full potential. Cause I just, I got bullshit that I'm focusing on bullshit that I'm focusing on being alone, being honest with myself, y'all saying it out loud, giving every single part of myself 
the angry part of me, the resentful part of me, the broken hearted part of me, the adult, the, the kind parent, the conscious parent. There's so many different parts of us. The bitch, like am I, if I'm being bitchy to myself, giving voice to every single one of those parts to myself and having a dialogue really helped me understand what was going on holistically inside of me, right? The fact of the matter is I've never not had a plan B. Like, I don't like to admit that I'm like the fucking toxic therapist. I'll tell you right now. Like I can make a joke about it, but it's true. Like, it's really true. Like a lot of people in the service industry, service-based, you know, coaching therapy, we're often the most toxic people in our lives. And that's why we love to help others. I'm going to put it straight out there. I'm a toxic ass therapist. I give really, I gave, or I give really good advice. And I was the most toxic person in my life. And this is what I want to admit the other, the other two weeks ago, this is just like a confessional, but I hope you're like getting something from yourself, like owning like the fuckery that you've been putting up with and that you've also been bringing to the table, right? Like I am not innocent in any of this, but two weeks ago, I said to a, a, a colleague of mine, I don't want to, I don't want to coach people anymore. I don't want to help people with their problems. I don't give a shit anymore. That's what I said. Wow. I just realized something. The last time I said that, I don't give a shit. I don't want to help people with their problems. I don't want to coach people. That's when I was heavily hooked on cocaine. That's the last time I said that. And I said it now recently. And it's because I was hooked on some guy, which acts like a drug. People also, you can be addicted to people, right? The dopamine that people give you, the, the push and pull that people give you, the chaos, that hit of chaos, that adrenaline. But shit. Wow. And I said to my girlfriend yesterday, cause I I'm realizing this, I'm spending, I'm, I'm like quick, I'm, I'm seeing it. I'm like, okay, what do I, you know, we're moving, we're moving. I said to my girlfriend, call me out. Anytime I ever say I'm done helping people, I'm tired of helping people. It's because I'm in my shit. It's because I'm hooked on something other than my purpose, other than God, something has replaced God for me. My God is first, but clearly something else came in place of God claim and place, place my purpose. Holy shit. Guys, yeah, I'm just having like an epiphany right here. The last time I said, I don't want to coach people anymore. I don't want to help people anymore. I'm tired of people's problems. That's when I was hooked on cocaine because of course, like I'm hooked on drugs. Of course, I, I don't have the bandwidth to help people's problems. Wow. And it's interesting because on Saturday, Sunday, how I spent my day was like really nice. It was just turned in words, really just kind of was like, okay, boss, you've clearly been going through a lot. Your heart's been broken. You, 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 you hold a lot of shame. You're angry with yourself. Let's let this go. Let's, let's talk about it. You know? And we were talking about like how I felt I wasn't in my purpose anymore. I was just questioning everything. And what I realized was like, man, I feel like I have nothing to give people right now because I'm still holding on. And I'm like, I'm just nurturing my own heart. And I was like, okay, well, what do you want to do? And it's like, well, of course I want to be of service. I want to help people. And it's like, well, what do you need to let go of? What do you really need to let go of? And I was like, I need to let go of him because my attention and my focus being on something that is just not in a place to be revived right now, like let it die. My attention, my focus, and my energy being put on that is taking away from me being able to live in my purpose. And I said to my girlfriend, I go, I am the most draining person in my life. And in my life, when I have been the most draining to myself and to my friends, and we'll flat, I'll flat out tell them, I'm so sorry if I'm draining you. And I have very understanding friends. But when I've been the most draining person in my life, it's because I am hooked on a man, period. That's my drug of choice, right? At this point, as has as always been a man. And I'm just owning up to that. And I, I realized that I, man, I've been feeling toxic. Like it's been feeling toxic when all I want is health. All I want is health and all I want is well-being. It feels really good to just kind of say this out loud. Like this is the point of this podcast. And if I'm not saying it out loud, then how the hell can I inspire you to say it out loud? Right? This is the th point of contention that this is the thing that I'm the most ashamed about is I'm the most ashamed that I haven't learned how to let go of people who just don't give a fuck about me. Like I don't get the hint. I take distance and I take, I make distance and dismissiveness and coldness. I make it mean like, Oh, let me try harder. Like, Oh, I must need to try harder. And not like if I were to see my friend exhibiting that same behavior, 
I'd be like, what are you doing? He's just not that into you. And that's a hard pill for me to swallow. It's hard for me to swallow this pill that someone could not like me on someone could not be interested in me in a romantic relationship. How could you not like me? Right. That's kind of my ego. That's not kind of my ego. That is fully my ego. This is how I think I actually really energetically cut the cord. The one belief that I've always had is that I can't orgasm when I'm on my back. You didn't expect me to say that, did you? Yeah. Every time I've ever orgasmed, either through sex or through masturbation, I have always needed to be on top or on my stomach. And one thing that I've always told my 39 years of my life, I've never had an orgasm laying on my back. And uh, in this process of letting go of my ex and uh, really work, I'm like, I'm just like committed. I ask God every day, God, just help me let go. I just want to let go. I just want to let go. I just want to just, just not care. I like, I, I want to be indifferent. I want to not have any energy around this anymore. I asked God, I surrendered. I did. I prayed every day. It'd been, it'd been a while actually. And um, on Sunday night, I like set the mood for myself. I put on like my little patio lights it was twinkling in my living room. I shut off all the lights. I lit a candle and the, the, the lighting is everything for me. And I um, watched the movie, The Seven Year Itch with Marilyn Monroe. And uh, she's such a bombshell, right? She's, she's just, just such a, just the epitome of just seduction. And <laughs> I don't know if it was the movie. I mean, I wasn't like masturbating to, I got horny and I was laying on my back and I was like, wait a minute, let me try to like orgasm this way. Just me and my hands, right? And so I'm laying on my back and I'm like, oh my God, I think I'm like, I'm, I started like going, you know, masturbating and I'm like, I can't do this. And I was like, yes, I can let go. Just let go. Let go of any control. Allow yourself to feel pleasure. Be one with your body. Allow the pleasure. Y'all, I had my first orgasm laying on my back and I gave it to myself. And I honestly think that that releasing of control helped me to feel the way I felt the next day. I went for a beautiful walk and I, it was beautiful. It was like the sun's on my face. It's great. I'm with my dog. Yada, yada. I get back in my car and I'm like, I just felt it. I just felt it. I, I was like, what is that feeling? It's like, oh my God, I think I'm over him. I actually think I'm over him. I felt like I didn't feel the heartache. I didn't feel the, the heart pull. And it's like, I think I'd spent so much time feeling that at some point. I just like, okay, I've, I've felt it. I'm, I'm good. It's been, it's been four years. Okay, we're good. <laughs> time to let go. Like, it's the thing is, I always thought that the letting go process was going to be like this pivotal moment. It was going to be like something happened and then I let go. And that's not at all how it was. I explained it to my friend. I was like, you know, when you ever just have those air farts, it's just like, <sighs> that's what it felt like. It just felt like a poof. I swear. And so like, that's what happened. That's what happened. I just, I, I, I let go. I let go on Monday. I, I like, I don't have a lot of words to describe it. It's a feeling like every so often, if I feel a little bit like, oh my God, have I really let go? Do I not have a backup plan? Like, I don't have any backup plan. It's just me now. Right. And my mom was like, you are the backup plan. Like I just let it go. And anytime I feel anxiety, I'm like, no, you're going to be okay. Like, trust yourself. You got to let go. Like, you know that this is the thing. This is the thing that's been holding you back is your, your attention and time that you give on, in my case, men who do not give you what you need back, who are just, they're just, you, you're a doormat, right? And like, I talked about that in the episode before this, it's like being a doormat. And it's like, oh shit, like I have been chasing after this guy, like stuff that I am not proud of, like double texting, sending text after text after text initiating dates all the time, me all the time. I just, I'm like, oh my God, I'm done. I'm done. I am done. And I've been praying for that for a very long time. And it feels so liberating. Yesterday was one of the best days of my life that I've experienced in a few years. So like I have best days of life, like every few years. <laughs> But yesterday was like the best day of my life. It was one of the most freeing days of my life because I experienced what it felt like to let go of this person. 
And why it's so important is not just that I let him go, but also I have nobody waiting for me uh, in the on the sidelines, right? So I'm telling you, there's something that is really connected to me having an orgasm on my back and me letting go. It's it's I've been letting go even in my body, and that's been helping me let go energetically. My ex. That's it. But I want to. Uh, there's a lot here that I want to share for any of y'all who are in relationships and you find yourself to be the ones that are always chasing other people. Um, and even in your business, this goes for business too. Like there is a direct correlation between how you show up in your relationships or the kind of relationships that you have and the success of your business, or even just how you feel in your business, right? It's like you showing up authentically, powerfully in your business is a result of how you also show up in your romantic relationships, whether you have one or not, or, you're, or just how you are with yourself. Like everything is everything, right? It, it is, it's like, it's all connected. Nothing, nothing is, um, nothing is separate. Everything is looking for its way back home to be integrated, right? And so like, you cannot avoid one area and expect the other area to thrive. Love and money for me are directly tied together. So I got a lot to say about this. I am excited to help y'all with this. I am like hot out of the oven. So it's like, it's, it's crazy when you're actually out of a relationship and you start hearing people's stories about their relationships. You're like, what the fuck? Why are you putting up with that bullshit? Why are you putting up with that? And it's like, if you want to raise your standards, <laughs> Come talk to me. No, but for real, if you ever want any coaching around this, and I am so happy to be able to help on this, uh, your communication in your relationships, um, difficult conversations that you need to have with your coworkers, like everything boils down to what you believe you deserve. If you believe you deserve to be ghosted, if you believe that you deserve to be left on red for four, five, six, seven hours, just be waiting. If you deserve to, if you be like, you deserve to, you know, have to keep chasing somebody to put in the work for your relationship, then I want to talk to you because let's, it's bullshit. Stop. You deserve better. If I may be so bold, I, I encourage people to break up their, their partnerships. Please find someone that is more aligned with you and let your partner go, let him or her go live. I would, I, I, I am not someone who says, you know, I'm not, I'm not a proponent of divorce. I'm not saying like, but like, dude, if it's not working, it's not working, wake up, wake up. And if you're in that situation, like, here's the thing, if you're in a relationship with someone and they wanna put in the work too, great. I'm not talking to y'all actually. Like if you're with somebody and you're like, oh, we're both doing the work, Great. But if like you're in a one sided relationship, if you're the one calling, texting, chasing, initiating, planning, always the one giving a, 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 um, affection all the time, let's work on this. And you find yourself in overdrive. I'm raising my hand because that was me like spot it. You got it. Like, I want to help you because underneath all of that or beyond all of that, you have a lot of energy that can be channeled into your creativity, your creative ideas, your projects. Like, fuck all that noise. Stop wasting your time on one-sided relationships. Stop. I'm like excited. Like I, I'm like giddy even sharing this. Like, wow, I'm really doing this. I'm really going to help people with this. And it's like, this is something for me, you know, being out of integrity for me is something that I don't like to tolerate in my life. And this is, and this is why I don't really ever market myself or have ever said, oh, I can help you with your relationships. But here's what I can help you with. I can help you wake the fuck up and walk away from a relationship that's no longer serving you. If you know that it's time, I can help. Or if you just need to talk it out to get some sense, make some sense out of it, I can help. I'm not attached to whether you walk away or not. I'm, I'm, I, I want you to see the truth of what's happening. And the way you find out what the truth is, is by saying it out loud to another human being who doesn't really know you that well and see what they have to say. It's someone who's been through similar journeys, right? You're in a toxic relationship. You've now become toxic yourself or, or the tox toxicity that you already have has been exacerbated. And now you find yourself doing shit that you would never do. Driving by people's houses, checking on his Facebook messenger to see if he's still active, you know, scoping out his friends' profiles, doing all sorts of crazy ass shit. You're like, what am I doing? 
Like, stop fucking being crazy. You got to wake up. Like, I, I have to wake up. And, and it takes a while to wake up sometimes. I had a girlfriend, Odessa. She said she learned this lesson at 17. I was like, you're lucky. I learned a lot of other lessons. But this lesson about knowing when to walk away and just kind of like, damn, let it go and like stop chasing and maintain your self-respect. I had, learned, I had to learn it at 39. I had to keep learning it over and over. I think, I think it's great because I always had this feeling like before 40, I'm going to be like full fuck it. I feel like I'm like amazing. I'm on fire right now. It's great. Anyway, um, yeah, that's today's episode. I'm, this is it. This is what I got. I'm, we're done. Like we're done fucking around. We're done holding on to it. Like we're done, done. Like, and I feel it's the greatest, it's the greatest burden lifted off my shoulders. The burden of feeling the need to do the work to make somebody love you. Thank you for listening. I'm here for you. All the links are in the description below. If you want to book a call with me, anything like that. Um, I look forward to talking to you. Bye.